What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your running. I want to hear about your week of running, I want to hear about your successes, and I definitely want to hear about your setbacks. Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Now, we've got a, we've got a good topic for you today. What do you think of your gait? Are you a rear foot striker, a mid foot striker, or a four foot striker? Do you ever look at Elliot Kipchoge when he's running and think, oh my gosh, that man is a beautiful runner. He has a beautiful gait. And sometimes when I'm out, driving around i'll see people running and i'll think to myself that person has a really nice looking gait they look good running and that's usually because they are land in midfoot or forefoot it's very rare that a heel striker looks good running and i can say that because i am a heel striker for 90 percent of the time i would say i am a heel striker the only times i tend to shift to midfoot to forefoot is when i'm running fast so if i'm doing intervals if i'm doing a tempo run i am more likely to land on my midfoot, land on my forefoot slightly, but definitely more mid. Other than that, when I'm running slow, when I'm going recovery runs, for the vast majority of my runs, I find myself heel striking. And I know I'm not alone. Just look at the bottom of your shoes. If you've got a little more wear on the outside edge of your heel, you're a heel striker. And that's okay. So we're gonna talk about it today. Because I found an article from the renowned coach Jason Coop, and the article is titled, Uninjured Heel Strikers Rejoice. Change to forefoot striking, not necessary research shows. This is backed by research. So Jason starts the article by pointing out that for far too long heel strikers have been ridiculed, mocked and laughed at in running communities around the globe. Is that true? Have I been being mocked this whole time? Maybe, but that's okay. And of course we've heard the argument that our Paleolithic ancestors, they ran on their forefoot because they didn't have shoes. And that big thick cushion of shoes, it's really messing us up and it's making us heel strike. And you may have even heard the argument that you'll be faster if you run up on your toes. But how many runners have you seen actually running up on their toes? Like a ballerina, very few I'd wager. Okay, but that's the setup. Let's talk about the science behind it. So it wasn't actually a study. It was a meta-analysis, which in my opinion is even better because you're looking at loads of studies. So the study was done at La Trobe University and they looked at 53 individual papers. And in these papers, the speeds of the runners ranged from nine minutes a mile all the way down to 626 minutes per mile. And get this, they found two things basically. And I'm gonna put this up on the screen just so you don't miss it. There is no compelling evidence to change from a rear foot strike to a four foot strike for injury prevention purposes if you are uninjured. I guess that's a big qualifier, if you are uninjured. But we'll circle back to that in just a second. And here's the second point. There is no compelling evidence that changing from a rear foot strike to a four foot strike improves the running economy, and that is the amount of oxygen that you consume per minute at a particular speed. So what I'm hearing is, is that heel strikers, if you land on the rear of your foot, that's not on its own going to get you injured. Also, heel striking does not result in a worse running economy. So you're not using more oxygen just because you heel strike. That is pretty fantastical news, isn't it? So guys, let me just stop you right here. If you are a four foot striker, mid foot striker, or rear foot striker, and you enjoy running in one of those three ways, give this video a thumbs up. Just a great way to help me help this video get out to people who may find it interesting. Also, if you're not already subscribed, consider doing so. So if you are a heel striker and you're training and you're going through the motions and you're going to races and you're trying to get faster, you can relax and you can be confident in the knowledge that the way you run, the natural way you run is not inhibiting your process. It's not holding you back. Now let's come back to that caveat if you are not injured. So you've probably heard that when you heel strike, oftentimes you are stepping too far out in front of your body. And I don't know why I'm doing this with my hand. It really doesn't show anything. But when you land on your heel, sometimes it means that your foot is coming past your knee. And that is overextending your knee. It's also increasing the impact forces of each step that you take. So if you find yourself constantly getting injured, it may be time to think about your gait. But if you are just a heel striker, who that is just, that's just the way you do it, and you're not getting injured, my friends, you can just stick with it. Enjoy that heel strike. Jason goes on to point out that many runners there are encouraged to land forefoot so they can actually get faster, so they can see these performance gains. Because when you land on your forefoot, generally speaking, you are gonna be landing more under the center of gravity, which reduces the amount of braking forces that you get if you are taking a step that goes too far forward. And as we've already said, if you take a step that goes past your center mass, you're gonna be increasing those impact forces because you're in the air for just a second longer. And although this does make sense, Jason points out that there is no long-term data of the effects of changing your foot strike. So if we change our natural biomechanics, how is that gonna work out for us down the road? And this is a good point. And many of you are gonna to relate to this if you have tried to adjust your gait, adjust your foot strike, I know I have. But in the short term, when you go to change something about your natural gait cycle, your performance is gonna decline. And this makes sense, right? If we're changing something that we are used to, if we're changing something that goes against what we naturally do, it makes sense that we're gonna have to kind of 
recondition our muscles to run in a different way. Not only our muscles, but our brain. Our brain is sending our muscles these signals to run in a certain way that is most efficient for the individual. And when you change that, obviously, it takes time. It takes time to build a habit. So Jason says that if switching from a heel strike to a forefoot strike results in performance gains, any at all, it's going to be extremely marginal. And he theorizes that if the gains were so great, if by switching from a heel strike to a forefoot strike was some revolutionary concept in the world of running, we would see improvement in performance right away. And those performance gains would only get better as time goes on. But we don't see that, guys. So Jason summarizes by saying that instead of focusing on foot strike, instead of changing what you do naturally, there are far better ways to improve your performance. And that's by focusing on sleep, nutrition, and your training plan, how you structure your training. Of course, Jason is a coach, so he's probably trying to sling his coaching services too, but that's okay. So one more thing, before we go into my training and I start telling you about my week of running, the IAAF published a biomechanical report, and they comprised data from the 2017 IAAF championships held in London. So you might be thinking, Matt, it's fine. You tell me I should just keep heel striking if I'm a heel striker, but all the best runners in the world, they strike forefoot. Look at Elliot Kipchoge. Yes, as I've already said, that man has a beautiful gait, but not all elite runners are like that. So in the IAAF's biomechanical report, they found that on the fourth lap of the marathon, so the marathon was four laps, 67% of the men were rear foot striking on the fourth lap. So just like I said happened to me, when I start getting tired or I start slowing down, I tend to heel strike a little more. That same pattern is seen with the elites. So 67% of men were heel striking on the fourth lap of the the marathon. Consequently, 30% were midfoot strikers and only 3% were forefoot strikers. In the women's race, 73% of the athletes were rear foot strikers on the fourth lap of the marathon. 24% were midfoot strikers and again, 3% were forefoot strikers. So both the men and the women, only 3% of the elite athletes are running on their forefoot by the end of the marathon. That tells me something. Gives me hope moving forward when I go out for an easy run and I'm heel striking. Some of the best athletes in the world are doing it. And if it's good enough for them, definitely good enough for me. Guys, of course, I will link to the article and I will link to the PDF files of the results of the men and the women's marathon. So you can just open those up and scroll through them. It's pretty interesting data. I mean, admittedly, you do have to be like a running geek and really enjoy this running data but if that's you click on the links below and check it out guys i had a great week of running now my volume is coming down a little bit and i did take monday and tuesday off because i ran that marathon on sunday so i thought i'd give my body a bit of a break and then on wednesday i started feeling all right so i went out for 7.2 miles very easy and my hamstrings were still aching just a little bit but i kept it easy because i knew that if i felt good i wanted to do a workout that i had scheduled for thursday and i went to bed nice and early and i got up nice and early and I, my legs felt pretty good so on thursday i knocked out 11 miles total with 10 miles at tempo pace. So I did one mile to warm up, 10 miles at tempo, and then I walked to cool down. And that workout left me feeling pretty good. Friday was a nice and easy 7.5 miles, and um, yeah, it, that felt good. It felt like an easy run, which I'm only making note of because on Saturday, I went out for an easy run, and things were not feeling as good. Now, I did end up running 7.5 miles total on Saturday, but for the first five or six miles, I was feeling quite creaky. Just even though my heart rate was low, things weren't going well. But I did throw in 10 30 second pickups with 30 seconds recovery in between. And by the end of the run, I was feeling fantastic. So you might've seen my short earlier in the week where I was talking about just picking up the pace for short bursts can really prime your body and make you feel good for your run. Then on Sunday, I wrapped up the week with 7.6 miles. This again was easy and it was how an easy run was supposed to feel. Everything was just, it was just a nice run. I also picked up the pace for six one minute intervals with one minute recovery in between just to get those legs kicking over. And all in all, I had a pretty good week. Now this is my first week of a two week taper and I managed to knock out 40.74 miles for the week, which is about 65 and a half kilometers. And like every week, I spent some time in the saddle on the Peloton. This week I knocked out a shade under 130 miles, which is about 209 kilometers. So yeah, pretty good week. Body's feeling good. But most importantly, I do want to hear about you. If you haven't already, go ahead and write in the comments below. Let me know about your week of training. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.